Hello, KubeCon. <clears throat> My name's Dom Del Nano, and I'm CEO and founder of Cosmic and Pixie Core Maintainer. And today, I'm excited to tell you more about how powering automatic authorization in Envoy through live traffic inspection works. Before we jump into things, a little bit more about myself. I've been working in the eBPF and observability space for the last few years. I first got introduced to the Pixie project when I was at Twitter as an end user. And since then, I've uh, moved over to the maintainer side and been working on the project the last few years. Before we get into the details, here's a disclaimer. I'm not a security expert, despite working for a security company you've probably heard of. Um, security is not a one-size-fits-all solution, and always consult your security experts. Um, I see this as a beginning of a conversation about how we can use tools like Pixie and other observability things to scope authorization policies. So why do we care about automatic authorization? The OWASP top 10 has security misconfiguration listed at number five. The authorization policies that people use last week, last month, last year, eventually suffer from security and configuration drift. Products are sunsetted, teams change, the organizational boundaries are drawn differently, and people forget to fix and write, make the boundaries of your authorization to match the world today. And so I'd like to see a place where authorization policies actually change in response to microservice environment changes. And I think modern observability is to the rescue. We've had a rise of zero instrumentation observability tools, things like Pixie and Hubble, that provide real-time service maps and layer seven visibility. Through the power of eBPF, they instrument all network traffic, providing full visibility of an environment. This means there's no blind spots. Nothing gets missed. Nothing needs to be manually instrumented. And because their ability to peek in at the layer seven level, this allows us to analyze access patterns and scope access rules accordingly. On the left-hand side here, this is a picture of what the Pixie UI looks like. We have a you know, network flow graph that shows kind of how all the microservices are connected. On the right-hand side is Hubble, which shows a similar view and also is able to point out that these HTTP services are talking to Kafka, Zookeeper, and Elasticsearch downstreams. So the goal of this talk is that we are gonna close AuthZ policy gaps as traffic evolves. We're gonna leverage these powerful eBPF tools to keep authorization policies in sync with existing traffic. And we're gonna set the foundation for future extension to provide least privilege access on a layer seven basis. So we're gonna be talking about Pixie and other CNCF components, um, but really this will fit into any architecture. You probably have your own authentication already. You probably have your own authorization in place. Um, so Pixie is the thing that we're gonna use to work with any of those tools. Um, but for the purposes of this talk, we're, we will have a reference architecture. And so for this reference architecture, we are gonna use mutual TLS for the authentication. We are gonna use Envoy and the open policy agent for authorization. We're gonna use Pixie to inspect the live traffic and do the data processing we need to actually generate the policies. And the final step uh, is gonna be orchestrated by Spark to actually kind of do the final generation. And so this is a proof of concept, but it really lays the foundation for how using Pixie and other tools like this can um, be applied to your technology stack. All right. So our automatic authorization playbook is gonna really center around these four things. Now I know this is a kind of busy diagram, but we're kind of, we're gonna step through each of these sequentially. And so like I was saying before, you're gonna bring your own authentication, authorization, and policy generation, and Pixie is the piece that's gonna be able to work with any components that you already have that are existing. Um, so step one is we need to understand our authentication layer and we need to figure out how we are going to access it. Um, our, because we have mutual TLS certs, um, when Envoy sends the request down to the backend service, 
that span is going to have the authentication details that we're going to pull out from Pixie and transform. Coming into the authorization piece, we're using the open policy agent, and so that is going to have to take these authentication details and ultimately turn it into the policy check that we want. Um, Pixie is going to be basically the input. We are going to be getting all of our raw network data. Um, it's able to basically augment and annotate it so we can add in the authentication details of the source and destination um, and transform it into a form that's easier for data processing. And then it supports open telemetry export. So we're going to send it downstream to the hotel collector, which eventually will get into object storage. And then from there, the final piece is that Apache Spark is going to ultimately generate the OPA policies. And when we put all of these pieces together, we're going to have a system that when Spark generates the policies and they get pushed to GitHub, OPA automatically picks up the latest thing and scopes the policies accordingly. Now, we're going we're gonna to step through each of these one by one. So I know this is a busy diagram, but we will go build it step by step. And so the first piece is the authentication. How the auth authentication is represented is going to dictate how our authorization will perform its checks. For this reference architecture, we're going to be using Spiffy and mutual TLS certs. Spiffy is just a specification for mutual authentication. And so you either have it implemented in sort of a JSON web token or a TLS certificate. Um, there's a project called Spire that implements the runtime of Spiffy, and so that is what we are going to be using for this. And because uh, Spire and Spiffy are part of the CNCF, they integrate natively with a lot of service meshes, and so it plugs in very easily to Envoy, which is the service mesh we'll be using today. Looking at a zoomed-in view of our original architecture diagram, so we're going to have a front-end pod and a back-end pod talking to each other. The mutual TLS, because each of them have their Envoy sidecars, the mutual TLS is going to happen between those two sidecar components. So because Pixie sees the spans of everything, um, the one that we actually really need to focus in on is the one between the back-end pod's Envoy and the back-end. And the reason being is that the mutual TLS has already been negotiated and Envoy will populate this X forwarded client cert header um, indicating the source and destination service. And so that essentially provides the, the data that we will use to transform into an OPA policy. So if you're not familiar, this XFCC header, the two components that are important are the buy piece which is essentially the downstream service, and the URI piece, which uh, corresponds to the upstream service. And so we'll, we're going to be keep, keeping talking about this. So um, this is something we're going to circle back to. Moving on to the authorization layer, I mentioned that we will be using Envoy. And so Envoy has a means for doing external authorization checks through its ext authz uh, filter. And what this facilitates is you basically can have a authorization service and Envoy will send a request to it before it proxies the request to the, to the intended service. And so what this provides us with, it, it's the way that we can hook into the service mesh system and actually enforce the policies. And so we are going to use the open policy agent, which is a popular policy engine that has a native integration with Envoy. So essentially, we can just write our policy, and the two already know how to uh, allow or deny the traffic based on if our policy deems it's acceptable. And so this is just a sample um, policy on the right-hand side here. But what the core details are is that OPA provides the means for accessing HTTP headers and also uh, details about the HTTP request that being like the HTTP method and the URL. And so when we think back to the policy that we're going to generate, we're basically going to take that XFCC header and also the method and URI in order to transform that into a policy that works at the layer 7 level. So building off our previous diagram, 
this request in red is the new addition. And so, like I said before, Envoy is going to reach out to OPA, send it, hey, here's this request that I'm about to send to the back end, and OPA will decide whether it is, should be allowed or not. <clears throat> the details of that request are that there is this specific check request proto, but um, it contains all of the headers that will go to the back, back end service. And so here again is our X forwarded client cert header that has the source and destination that we wanna authorize. Okay, so now going from this to what our OPA policy will look like, we essentially, if you look at that very top comment on the right hand side, we have our spiffy um, XFCC header and then we have to parse that and turn it into destination and source services. And then the data that we get from Pixie is going to template a bunch of dictionaries and other variables that we will then use against that XFCC header. And ultimately, um, we will check not only that the source and destination service should talk to each other, but also if their HTTP path, prefix, and method match. All right, so with the two kind of prerequisites out of the way, the authentication and the authorization, now we're gonna dig into the actual generating of the policy. But before we get to that, if for those that aren't familiar with Pixie, I wanted to give it a brief introduction. So the goal of Pixie is performance debugging without manual instrumentation. We do resource utilization. We do protocol tracing, so you can see the latency and payload, the, the full payload. Uh, which is you know, why we're using it in the context of this automatic authorization. We also do uh, performance profiles with flame graphs. And kind of the three main like architecture details that are important is that Pixie is zero instrumentation. Because it's powered with eBPF, you don't have to make application changes and we see all network traffic. We have a distributed architecture with an in-memory data store. The eBPF data source is high volume and so we, we thought keep it there unless you need to query and access it. Um, and then the final piece is that Pixie is scriptable through its own Python pandas programming language. And this allows us to query and process our telemetry. And so in the context of this automatic authorization use case, the scriptability of Pixie is really what like fits the missing piece here is that we get our telemetry, the raw network data, but we'll be able to turn it into the thing we need to generate the policies. So a little bit more on the scriptable components of Pixie. I mentioned that it is Python and Pandas. It was built for data analysis and machine learning in mind, and all of Pixie's UI widgets and data processing are all powered by this language. Um, on the right-hand side here, you can see a little snippet of what Pixel looks like. And so, like on line four, this is uh, requesting the last 30 seconds of spans, of HTTP spans. And then on line six, Pixel is actually able to annotate each data frame with the Kubernetes pod that that frame corresponds to. And then because we have all of the payload and metadata, we can pull out things like the X forwarded client cert header and do the processing that we need. And so um, one other piece is that this Pixel also supports OTEL export. And so that is how we're gonna be integrating this into the rest of our pipeline. All right, with that background out of the way, let's uh, look at more into how Pixie fits this live traffic inspection role. So on the right-hand side here, um, one way to run this pixel is through the CLI. And so we are gonna write our export script and trigger it that way. This will poke the Pixie control plane and ultimately trigger the data collectors in your Pixie environment to do all the data collection and processing. Um, from there, we're gonna annotate it with the source and destination Kubernetes deployment pod information. We'll also pull out the layer seven access like the HTTP method and URL and the authentication details, which will be the transformation of the XFCC header. And then because it supports OTEL export, you know, it'll ultimately go to our OTEL collector and then into our object store for further processing. One thing I just wanna mention again is that while we're focused on the XFCC header here, because Pixie has the visibility for the full payload, 
whatever your authentication mechanism is, Pixie can still work with that. It's just, uh, you know, you, we just have to transform it slightly differently. Sorry about that. All right, so downstream of Pixie is where we are going to do the final processing of the spans and the policy generation. So the Hotel Collector uh, S3 export is going to have this um, S3 prefix that basically gets uploaded every minute. And the data contained in, that, in those JSON files is just gonna be like a heavily nested version of what I have represented here. Um, there's a lot more information in the OTLP protocol, but for our purposes, there's really just these four components that we care about, which are the source service, which is the buy piece, the destination service, sorry, I had those flipped. The URI and buy are the source and destination respectively, the HTTP method and the HTTP URL. And so the final piece of the puzzle is that Spark is going to take this input file, these input files, and aggregate and output policy files that fits this sort of directory structure. And the reason why we have this structure in place is just to aid the code generation and make the final files like easy to understand. But the high level is that this imports directory will have a file for each backend service. And each of those files is essentially going to define the source services that have communicated with it and a list of URL and HTTP methods that, uh, that, are, that should be allowed. And then the opapolicy.rego file ultimately will import all of these import files and then have that um, authorization checks that we looked at from the previous slide. With that, I'd like to show a demo of how this works in action and how we can create this semi real time system where we you know uh, process these spans, consume them from s three, push them to GitHub and have Opa automatically pick up the changes. Hello. Now that we've seen all the details of how this architecture is going to work, let's dive into the demo. So this diagram should look familiar at this point, but we have all of the components we need to have uh, this feedback loop where our tracing captured by Pixie informs our uh, OPA generation Spark job, which then eventually feeds into our authorization. So let's just do a brief recap of everything here. So at this bottom part here, we have our authentication layer. We're using MTLS between the front end's envoy and the back end's envoy. For this demo, we're actually gonna have a front end and a front end dash two pod. And what we will see is that we are gonna simulate what happens when the front end two pod gets decommissioned. And we'll watch as this automation is able to revoke access of the front end two pod from the back end pod. Coming back to these details, so the span that Pixie is going to be capturing is the one between Envoy and the backend service. This is because that's where all of our rich authentication details occur uh, once Envoy decides it's gonna forward the request through. Um, so from there, we have our authorization layer, which is OPA, and it is going to be pulling a specific GitHub URL for its bundle which is essentially a tar of all of the policy files. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna start with a default allow policy file and all of the traffic between front end and front end two will flow freely from, to the back end pod. We are then gonna run this export script, which is going to trigger Pixie's capturing of the data, its enrichment of the spans with the authentication and layer seven details and ultimately end up in our S3 bucket. And then we are gonna run our Spark job and basically regenerate the policies based on the traffic. And we will push that to GitHub and we will show that the difference between a default allow and a generated policy is a no-op and traffic continues to flow freely. 
from that point, we are going to decommission the front end two pod, and then we will wait five minutes until uh, those spans are no longer being produced. Um, since Pixie's look back window for our export script is five minutes. And then when we restart this process all over again, the next Pixie export is actually not going to contain any front end two spans. And so then when our Spark job goes to regenerate policies, we will no longer have that present and we will shut off traffic from that non-existent service, making sure that our uh, auth -Z policies remain up to date with the services that are real and prevent any security misconfiguration. Trends. All right, with that, so the all the, in the Pixie demos repo underneath this automatic auth -Z Envoy Opera directory, the readme here tells details on how to get it set up and what prerequisites you have to do. I've already gone ahead and installed all of the components on my cluster, so we are ready to go. So, I've had my cluster running here for a few minutes now. We can see that there is the front end two pod and the front end pod. The front end pod's URLs are all suffixed with underscore one, while the front end two pods are suffixed with underscore two. So, we can see here that this is the current OPA policy rego file, and it's just allowing all traffic. Uh, now it is time for us to run our export script, basically have Pixie dump all of our data in S3. In order to show that the data is going to be newly populated, I am going to show what data already exists. So we exported the data on minute 16 and we are now going to run this export script. And from there we can see minute 40 uh, has just been uploaded. Now that contains the spans of both the front end and front end two pods. So we can now uh, run the Spark job which for right now is just a command line utility to run Spark in a local mode, but in a real production setting, you would run this on an actual Spark cluster since your data volume would be much larger. All right, from there we can see that this OPA imports directory was added, which is the directory that we looked at uh, previously. And we can see that the backend service has two valid sources, front end and front end two, and the URLs correspond to what we expect. Also, the um, OPA policy file is now no longer default allow. It now, you know, is looking at that X forwarded client cert header um, and also performing layer seven access by checking the HTTP method and the path prefix matches um, and ultimately performs the authorization check. So with that, we need to build another bundle and push that to GitHub, and then OPA will take over from there. And actually, once it detects that the bundle has been updated, it's going to automatically apply its rules. From there, I'm going to speed this up until the policy is updated. The OPA agent has now accepted that bundle, and we can see that both services are still freely getting 200 response codes. So despite us actually applying the policy, um, we've properly accounted for all of the traffic that exists between these services. From here, we are going to delete the front end two deployment and then regenerate the over policies again. And we're gonna see that the Pixie traces and the Spark job will ultimately remove the permissions that no longer make sense since the traffic is no longer there. Since our Pixie script has some look back window defined, 
we can see here. Five minutes. I'm going to speed this up and then uh, resume once the strands have gauged out of that time limit. It's been five minutes since that pod is terminated, so we are going to go back here and run our Pixie export script. So there's been a new minute of data exported. And from there, we can run the spark job and regenerate, and regenerate our authorization policies. And the front end to service should now be removed. And we can see here, it was in fact all of the method prefixes for that service were completely removed. And from there, we can go ahead and regenerate the bundle, push that out to GitHub, and the OPA agent will eventually pick that back up. And then, you know, we close the gap, preventing any issues where there is any security drift. And so our microservice environment and our Auth Z policies are kept in lockstep. As our environment evolves, our Auth Z policies follow. All right, so hopefully that gives you a picture of how this system would work end to end. So what I see for the future um, the current um, layer seven policy check is essentially a prefix match. And depending on how, how much dynamic components you have in your URL, um, you have to decide how to handle those cases. But I see a future where this could actually generate logic with really strict route information. Um, RPC frameworks, API tooling, and generated client libraries provide route information and essentially define what URLs a service responds to. Um, things like gRPC and Open API, which is formerly Swagger, basically provide this information. And so if you could join this inside of some of this processing, you could get least privilege access enforcement, which I think would be really, really amazing. So to recap things, um, this proof of concept really lays the foundation where you can have continuous enforcement of your existing traffic patterns. You know, there, there's a real risk with security and configuration drift where organizations, teams, products change, and people don't often know to clean up after the fact. And so if you don't have something that is watching this, I'm sure it's already happening somewhere. And so the ability to basically keep your service infrastructure aligned with your authorization rules, I think is really powerful. And really the key to all of this here is Pixie's data processing. Pixie is essentially this platform that provides you this data processing capability to use your telemetry data in new ways that you know other tools just don't have the capability of. And so um, that's how like I talked about, you bring your own existing architecture, your authentication, your authorization, and Pixie provides the tooling to work within those means. With that, I wanna thank you all for attending my talk. Um, here are some links to the Pixie project, the uh, documentation website, and also the pull request that contains all of the code that we talked about today. I'm gonna be hanging around for a little bit longer and I have uh, some Pixie shirts still. So if you want to come talk to me, I'd happy to give you a shirt. Thank you.